So fun fact, I am one of the very few organizational psychologists out in the public space that has actively come out repeatedly denouncing training based on critical race theory in organizations. It might be called critical race theory. It might be called diversity training based on critical race theory. It might be called anti-racist training. It might be called unconscious bias training. It might be called implicit bias training. There are lots of different names for it. But really, any, any sort of diversity training that is based on critical race theory, I have been screaming from the rooftops this entire year that it does not work, that it is resoundingly ineffective, and Sadly, this has fallen on deaf ears a lot of places in the United States because this type of training literally took over my entire industry. I actually stopped doing a lot of training. Well, I stopped doing trainings for a couple of reasons. Number one, the COVID stuff made it really impossible. I hate doing virtual facilitations. And so for me to have to all of a sudden do all of my trainings online was my very definition of a nightmare. So I just really cut back on the amount of corporate trainings I was doing. Thank God I had YouTube and you guys supporting what I'm doing to fall back on. I, I'm forever grateful for that. But the other reason that I really stopped doing a pretty significant amount of corporate training was that I was finding it extremely difficult to sell anything that was not diversity training, anti-racist training based on critical race theory. It was all people wanted. After George Floyd's, George Floyd's death, it was all people wanted was this anti-racist training. And every every question about it was like, what are you doing about diversity? Where's the anti-racist component? It was like, and it just got to the point where I was like, either I can be an actual grifter and make a ton of money doing some sort of thing that I position as anti-racist training, or I can just say, I'm not playing this game because I think this training is extremely ineffectual. I have seen zero evidence that it actually produces quantifiable results, and I think it hurts the people that have to go through it. And I have been canceled for that. I have taken rounds of grief for that. But I was right. I was right. I was right. I was right. And yes, I'm going to celebrate every single second of being right. This article came out in The Telegraph in the UK yesterday. Exclusive unconscious bias training to be scrapped after review finds it has little effect. Nearly 170,000 staff across the civil service have taken part in sessions over the past five years at an estimated cost of 300,000, 370,000 pounds, which yes, I did convert that to dollars. That's half a million dollars, half a million dollars right there, wasted down the tube on anti-bias training or unconscious bias training or whatever you want to call it. The roots of it are pretty much are pretty similar. So it honestly doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do here is we're going to read this here article and we're going to talk about why the UK has basically scrapped this entire initiative because they found zero evidence of its effectiveness. But before we get into that, listen, folks, I do daily content around news, politics, culture, really anything that I happen to find interesting and I think should be talked about more in the public space. If you appreciate the type of content that I'm putting out, I hope you'll follow along by giving the channel a subscribe, turning on notifications, leaving a comment and telling me what you think, sharing it out with your friends and family. All of these things really, really help me out. If you want to go the extra mile and also get ad-free videos, because sometimes you guys like to complain about the ads that YouTube places on the channel, well, I got a real easy solution for you. You can join my locals community. It is completely free to join my locals community and every single video that you see on my YouTube is also posted on my locals community. In fact, some of them are actually posted before they make it to YouTube because I have to go through the manual YouTube review process and all that stuff. But so they end up being available on locals before and they're completely ad free on locals. Now, if you want to join locals and get access to special perks, there is a $5 a month subscription, but you don't need to do that in order to get the videos for free if that's all you're looking for. All right, let's jump in to the content at hand. Whitehall unconscious bias training will be scrapped for all civil servants after a government review found little evidence that it works. The Telegraph has learned the cabinet office will confirm the move on Tuesday after an assessment of the training found no conclusive proof that it changes behavior or improves workplace equality in the long term. Now, 
My biggest concern with this type of training is what it does is it actually pits employees against each other and it creates an atmosphere of distrust among employees. It actually encourages people to call each other out and call each other a racist. It, what it, what in a lot of places, what they do is they actually separate the white employees from the employees of color or anyone that's non-white and they make the white employees write confessions of their racism and apologize to their co-workers of color for being racist. I'm not making this stuff up. That's what a lot of this training does. And what I my contention in this is that it is going to destroy teamwork. It's going to destroy the ability of people to effectively collaborate with each other. It's going to destroy psychological safety, which is just a fancy way of saying trust. It's going to really get in the way of everything that helps to create effective teamwork. And regardless of what your role is in any organization, you need to be able to work effectively with your coworkers in order to produce quantifiable results for the organization. No man is on an island all by themselves. We all need people that are doing different components of the processes that need to be in place. And we need to be able to play nicely with those people without calling them a racist every five seconds. Such courses have been found in some cases to lead to unintended negative consequences, said a government source familiar with the review. What they mean by unintended negative consequences is that when these trainers actually come in, what they do is they literally teach people stereotypes. They teach people stereotypes that they may not have actually known about prior to having this training. And so what happens when all of a sudden you're teaching people stereotypes? Well, guess what? You're going to impress that stereotype upon them and they're actually going to be acting as though that stereotype is true. When in fact, before that, they may not have had any inkling that that stereotype even existed. Unconscious bias training is intended to alert people to hidden prejudices that may harbor that influence, excuse me, that may harbor that influence. That is a really poorly worded sentence. I'm going to read that one from the beginning again. Unconscious bias training is intended to alert people to hidden prejudices that may harbor that influence their behavior and decision making. Nearly 170,000 staff across the civil service have taken part in sessions in the past five years at an estimated cost to the taxpayer of 370,000 pounds, also known as half a million dollars. Ser a series of Tory MPs have expressed anger about the training, which they argue is driven by the woke agenda rather than evidence and only serves to enrich consultants. Listen, I've talked several times about how much money Robin D'Angelo makes giving a one hour talk. It's five figures, dude. It's it's minimally like, you know, Tucker Carlson way back in the day reported she makes like $6,000 for a talk. No, 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 no. Robin D'Angelo typically will make significantly more than $6,000 for one talk. I mean, some universities have paid her $12,500. I've seen estimates uh, in the 20000 range for one talk. She's she's making millions of dollars. She's making a metric boat ton of money trying to convince people that they're racist and people play into this all the time. I mean, in the in the United States, the federal government has paid millions, millions of dollars, millions of our taxpayer dollars for this type of training until Donald Trump outlawed it by executive order a few months back, which will inevitably be rescinded if Joe Biden actually ascends to the presidency, which is a whole other problem. But you know what? What this article tells me is that there's hope. There is hope that we don't need the Trump executive order to have people see logic and reason that this training absolutely produces zero quantifiable results. Learning about unconscious bias was first made a requirement for all Whitehall staff in 2014 with online sessions provided for junior staff and face-to-face -face lectures for senior Mandarins. I have no idea what a Mandarin is, but okay. The compulsory curriculum has since been scaled up to include four modules in diversity and inclusion training, as well as separate standalone courses. A new government review of the academic literature on the training echoes that a 2018 assessment conducted by the Equality and Human Rights Commi Commission, which found a mixed picture of its effectiveness. Acknowledging the increasing popularity of the training in organizations across the UK, the commission stated, the training has been implemented even though some academic research and reports highlighted the ineffectiveness and even the negative effects of UBT, unconscious bias training. I, guys, I have spent hours, hours, I'm not kidding, searching for evidence of the effectiveness of this, of this training. I have asked numerous dozens probably of times, if not even more than that, for people who believe in this training to provide me evidence that it actually works. To this day, I've been working on this little project for months. 
To this day, no one has come forward to provide me with any valid evidence that this training, not even any valid, I shouldn't even use the word valid there, any evidence at all that this training is actually effective. You don't want to know why? Because it is literally never measured. It's never measured when these consultants do it. That's not how they sell it. They don't sell it in terms of effectiveness. They don't sell it in terms of how it increases productivity, how it increases equality, how it increases access to opportunity. They don't sell it based on any of that. They sell it based on you don't want your staff to revolt when they get pissed that you're not doing anti-racist training and then call you out for not being an anti-racist organization. That's how it gets sold into organizations. And then maybe not quite that specifically, but typically how this stuff gets sold is through the HR offices and the CEOs generally don't care. And they're like, yeah, 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 go do that stupid training. They don't believe in it at all. It's just to keep the HR people off their back and to, and to like throw them a bone for this stupid diversity training that they want to do. But it's not about results. I have talked to many CEOs like, uh, like on the down low, I don't, I, I can't like say their names publicly because they'll get rashes of grief from their employees and probably their investors too if they spoke about it publicly but i've talked to many of them who say carlin we know this is stupid we know this doesn't actually work we know this doesn't do much of anything but we have to do it we have to do it because we don't want to face the twitter mob but there's no evidence to back it up and in fact the only evidence that i've seen and i think they actually reference that evidence in this article tells us that it is actually better for an organization to do nothing than it is to, for them to do anti-racist training let's keep going it added that there remains much academic debate on the accuracy of the implicit association test, which is very, very true. There's actually, there's articles that the, the people who developed the implicit association test at Harvard, which is an online test, you can go and take it right now if you want to, but the people who have developed the test actually are like, yeah, it doesn't, we don't really, it doesn't really measure much of anything. They've actually come out and said like, you know, we probably really shouldn't be using this for anything because it doesn't measure what it says it does. Oh, let's see. The accuracy of the implicit association test, one of the most common measures of unconscious bias training, which measures the reaction time of how quickly a participant can link positive and negative stimuli to labels such as male and female. Okay, so fun fact. Obviously, I, I knit a lot, right? So I'm like super dexterous. I'm super dexterous with both hands because I just like, I knit a lot. I pass the implicit bias training test with flying colors. According to the implicit bias training test, for the amount of people that have called me racist and the amount of people that have canceled me, I have passed the implicit bias test anytime I've taken it with flying colors to say I have no implicit bias. And anytime I bring this up, anytime someone cancels me or calls me a racist, I got, well, I, I tell them, I'm like, I passed the implicit bias test. They're like, well, Carlin, we know that test isn't real. So even the people advocating for this stuff know it's not real, but they say it's real when it's, when it's convenient for them to do so. And then if you point out, you're like, I don't have implicit bias according to the test that you told me to take. They're like, dude, we know that test isn't accurate. So these people are such hypocrites. Nothing pisses me off more than a hypocrite. The potential for backfiring effects when participants are exposed to information that suggests stereotypes and biases are unchangeable was another conclusion of the commission's review. Neil O'Brien, Tory MP for Harborough and a vocal skeptic of the training, welcomed the decision to abandon the training on Whitehall as great news. How, how British of a reaction. That's great news. He told the newspaper, the scientific evidence suggests that unconscious bias training does not work and may be counterproductive. Taxpayers would much rather see their hard-earned money spent on more productive, less divisive things. So the UK has come to their senses. Welcome to the party. We're glad you're here. Now, if only Joe Biden would come to his senses because listen, whether or not you want to hear this, they, they, it's looking more and more likely every single day that he's going to be the next president. I mean, if you believe the media that, uh, we like, like, okay. So the electoral college voted yesterday. They basically like Joe Biden is now the official president elect. What the media is not telling you, of course, is that that's not actually the last word on this, on the subject. The Senate has to vote to, um, to uh, confirm or not the Senate, the Congress has to vote to confirm this or to accept the electors, um, which is a hearing that's presided over by Mike Pence. So who knows what could happen there? But the reality is this. There are seven states that have also sent a different state of electors to Congress just in case they uncover evidence of fraud. And many states are actually now continuing their investigations, knowing that they can pick either slate of electors based on what they find. So we don't know for sure yet, but guys, the reality is that Joe Biden is looking pretty likely, and if he gets in, he is going to rescind Trump's executive order on this topic, which is going to bring critical race theory 
back into the federal government. It's going to bring all the grifters that offer this training back into the federal government, which is going to be a problem. However, if we can still keep beating the drum of it's not effective, it's not effective, it's not effective. Are we measuring it? What is the goal? Why are like, is this actually going to increase productivity, team cohesion, all the things that we know are important to teamwork? If we can keep beating this drum, what this shows us is that people will listen to reason. They don't need to be forced with an executive order to do it. They will listen to reason. One of the reasons I got on the Trump train to begin with was I was so happy that he banned this nonsense training. And, you know, we might need to go, we might need to go on and continue to fight this battle without him. But I, I mean, maybe, maybe people will see the light. Maybe, maybe we can all hope. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this one. I'll see you soon.